Hello, I'm Stella Luna Velez, an undergraduate creative writing major at Fresno State. I serve as the student representative on the university's creative writing alumni chapter. On behalf of Jefferson, Angela, and the entire alumni committee, I'd like to give a huge thank you to all those who supported the fifth and final round of our scholarship fundraising effort, the Fresno 15 Creative Writing Marathon. This year, we are thrilled to report that for the second time in our five-year campaign, we met our goal of raising $5,000 in contributions to the Larry Levis Memorial Scholarship. With this latest success, we've now reached our five-year goal of a $25,000 scholarship endowment. Each and every one of our wonderful donors has made this dream a reality. This endowment will now provide annual scholarships to Fresno State MFA students in perpetuity. This year, we are pleased to award the third Larry Levis Memorial Scholarship to third-year MFA fiction student, Callie Camara. Callie is a fan of all things arts and crafts, from painting to sculpting to cross-stitching, and she enjoys bringing her stories to life not only through the text but through drawings. Currently, she serves as an associate editor for the Normal School magazine. Callie is an avid fan of YA literature and is currently working on her first book, a YA fantasy novel. Her writing explores themes of grief, loss, body insecurity, and intergenerational relationships often incorporating magical realism or the slightly abnormal. As a thank you to all of our supporters, we invited Callie to share one of her stories. Please welcome Callie. Hi, my name is Callie Camara and I am a third year fiction candidate at Fresno State and the third recipient of the Larry Levis Memorial Scholarship. I would like to thank everyone who has made this scholarship possible. Thank you so much. Today I'm going to be reading the beginning of my YA fantasy novel titled Surefire. Rory was a walking fire hazard, in every sense of the word. If she tried to conjure a candle flame, she sparked a giant blaze. If she sneezed too hard, she charred her nostrils. Sometimes her hair started smoking when she overheated, and her parents had long since banned her from using any kitchen appliances. Fire was not her friend, and yet it was the element she had been gifted by the gods. She slumped against the stadium's railing. The academy's fighting grounds were packed that day with students and community members from all around the greater Skygill area gathered to witness the first day of the league's licensing exams. Rory felt the anticipation in the crowd around her, the desire to see what this year's graduates had to offer. These students had trained for this day for many years, honing their control and dexterity over their gifted element, each one seeking the opportunity to duke it out at the professional level. And Rory would know. She was one of them. Well, saying that was being generous. She was a graduating student in the Academy's records, and she had trained with her classmates for years. But in practice, her confidence with her fire was woefully behind kindergarten levels of control. She fiddled with the bandage on her pointer finger. That had been a failed attempt at channeling flames just last week. The thought of passing her own exam, scheduled for two days from now, felt like a far-flung fantasy. She was completely unprepared. And that was the clincher. She might be a graduating student, but if she couldn't pass this exam, she wouldn't graduate. Four years of training at the academy, a school renowned for their great fighting program, would go straight down the drain, and where would she be, in this world that relied so heavily on the elements, if she couldn't prove that she was capable of using her own? Above her, the midday sun bore down on the crowd. Rory exhaled, tilting her head back towards the sky. The last licensing exam of the day was scheduled to start soon. She had to put her troubles aside. Today, she was here to support. The murmur of the crowd rose as the last student and proctor emerged from the stadium tunnel. Cheers and high-pitched whistles rang out, a couple handmade banners waving in the air. Rory perked up, leaning over the railing. She picked a spot in the front specifically so her view wouldn't be obscured. The sands surrounded a large, circular area of dirt three meters lower than the stands. Reinforced cement walls lined the circumference, with the exception of two main tunnels positioned opposite one another. In between battles, 
The Academy techs had sent an Earth Elemental to smooth out the worst of the damage, but it was still in a sorry state. Chunks of upturned earth, now filled with muddy water, dotted the arena. Scorch marks stained the stadium's lower walls, and the last student's icy crystals, large, meter-tall structures, still melted in one corner. Directly above the scorch marks, a spectator in the first row banged on the invisible plasma wall, separating the crowd and the battlers. His hits in sync with the crowd's battle chant. Hey-o, oh, hey-o. Oh. Time to come out and play, oh. Glowing blue pentagons briefly rippled into being around his fist, then faded away. The student and Proctor picked their way through the cleared path to the center of the field. With their black, head-to-toe bodysuits and protective gear, shin guards, chest plates, headgear, and arm pads, they stood out in sharp relief against the pale earth. The Proctor had a great brain a bright green patch sewn into the sleeve of his arm, distinguishing him from the student. Not that it was necessary, Rory thought. The student, Rory's friend, Orla, was tall, very tall, towering over the proctor. She walked with her head held high, a forceful grace behind each step. Once they reached their starting position, Orla turned, seemingly observing the crowd. Her braid flickered with the movement. Excuse me, her braid flicked with the movement, streaming out from her headgear in an interweaving pattern of light brown and blonde strands. The tips reached all the way to her bottom. The speaker mounted on the pole behind Rory crackled to life, bursting with music, fast-paced and electric. The crowd immediately matched its intensity, one little girl screaming so loud in Rory's ear that she flinched. The banners were up again, people on both sides of her rising to their feet, save for the occasional grandma, who twirled a little green flag instead. Her body tingled. It was impossible to ignore the tinge of elemental energy on the wind, the way it was suffused by the excitement in the air. On the field below, the proctor and Orla took their places, their feet positioned on a white line in the sand. Compelled by the crowd, Orla spread her arms, and a faint golden aura appeared around her body. The dust around her feet stirred, licks of faint white light circling around her calves, torso, and biceps, and arching into the sky. Her braid flared out behind her, flitting around the curves of her arms, mesmerizing the way it swayed. The music faded, and the announcer's voice rang out. The licensing exam of Orla Teoling will begin when the horn sounds. The match will conclude when one side concedes. At this distance, Rory couldn't make out the expression on Orla's face, only the way she leisurely dragged a line through the sand, creating a smooth platform to stand on. But Rory could imagine the easy grin on her face as she planted her feet. Eager to fight, maybe overly so, though her posture suggested otherwise. While the proctor took up a battle stance, feet spread, knees bent, one hand raised while the other lingered near his thigh, palm open to the ground. Orla didn't bother to lift her arms, standing almost casually, her knees barely bent. The twinge of annoyance struck Rory. Then the horn blared. Thank you so much.